Uh, well, I came to Leicester from Cardiff just four years ago, although I'd immigrated from Australia seven years before that, and uh, yes, I have passed the citizenship test. <laughs> it wasn't easy. Uh, I have to say, though, I knew very little of Leicester's cultural offer before moving here. I'd heard of De Montfort Hall and I'd heard of the Spark Festival. Uh, I knew of the creative work that Curve was doing with well-known names like Akram Khan and Juliette Binoche, because that had been making some ripples in British theatre. And I was also pretty enamoured with the aesthetic and the architecture of Curve's building itself. The whole concept of inside-out theatre was a really brave step forward, I thought, and it inspired a whole lot of debate in architectural and theatrical circles. I knew that Leicester had a young and multicultural population, both of which really excited me about the opportunity to move here. And I knew that Adrian Mole, whom I'd spent my teenage years empathising with, had grown up here. I also knew that in Cymraeg, the Welsh language, Leicester is Caeach Lear, Lear's city, the place King Lear is said to hail from. And that intrigued me a lot too, as it showed me a glimpse of Leicester's ancient history and heritage. But other than these few snapshots, I had no real view of what Leicester had to offer, culturally or otherwise. In seven years of living in the UK, I'd never contemplated visiting Leicester. I didn't see it as a place with a whole lot to offer, and it certainly wasn't projecting any great sense of identity or purpose out into the ether. But coming into a cultural leadership role here and, and throwing myself into that with some gusto, what I discovered really was a city of complexity and contradiction. And in my view, it's a city that would really like to be known for its cultural and creative excellence, and yet for some reason sometimes seems to hold itself back from greatness. I was told by many of the cultural practitioners whom I met that this was a city that hides its light under a bushel and that it was time to let our creativity and talent shine, to celebrate everything that we have here. And indeed, it was exactly those sentiments that then become the thrust of Leicester's bid for the City of Culture back in 2013. And I have to say that that bid for the City of Culture was a really exciting time. Um, as a cultural community, we came together and we allowed ourselves to dream of greatness. We threw ourselves into consultation and we engaged with hundreds of people. We were brimming over with ideas and we gave ourselves permission to think really big. We thought up new commissions, new collaborations and major projects that we thought would truly put Leicester on Britain's cultural map, helping create an identity and sense of place for our city along the way. And then we lost to Hull. <laughs> Fast forward 18 months. Have we moved on all that much? And if not, what exactly is holding us back? We certainly undoubtedly have some terrific cultural assets, projects and events that are truly of international class and already enjoy national attention. The Germanist Expressionist Collection at the New York Museum. Curved own produced musicals and plays like Adrian Mole, which we very much hope will go on to tour the UK next year. Dave's Leicester Comedy Festival, which had 640 performances this year, transforming the most unlikely places across the city into cultural and comedy venues. Kasabian's homecoming gig in Victoria Park, and recently the dignity, the simplicity, and the grace with which Leicester reinterred King Richard III, and the sublime Leicester Glows celebration that lit up our city streets, closing a week in which Leicester was under international spotlight then there are certainly those that we have that are truly remarkable and yet do remain hidden under the bushel. The mighty creatives and their board academy, it's a world-class innovative program providing young people with the skills to govern organisations. Leicester's incredible design community. We have one of the largest design hubs in the country with design agencies working internationally from creative workspaces all over the city and county, and yet we don't talk about it very much the incredible talent that can be found here. And I, I truly believe, as someone who's worked all over the place, that Leicester is punching way above its weight when it comes to talent development. Like the dancer and choreographer Akash Adedra, he's one of our associate artists. He's now performing at the Royal Opera House and Tours the World. Or Lulu, May and Joel, who you just heard sing. They're a great testament to the talent that's being born, spotted and nurtured here. We're a city that prides itself on its pluralism, um, interculturalism, and especially our inclusivity. 
But sometimes I feel our desire for inclusivity comes at the expense of creative excellence. And it is here that we must decide just what sort of city of culture we want to be. Are we in pursuit of the extraordinary? Do we want to be known as a powerhouse of creative talent and new work? Do we want to be attracting visitors to our city to have a memorable cultural experience? Do we really have these ambitions, or do we just use that sort of language because we think we should? And if we really can commit to pursuing the extraordinary, how do we get there? I noticed with some interest that Leicester's Labour Party manifesto <laughs> includes a headline commitment to maintaining Leicester as a city of culture, with many of our city's cultural assets and our extensive community and cultural festivals and celebrations listed. It's really encouraging to see culture acknowledged as so important by our city's political leaders. And I'm not sure that it would have been so front and centre as a promise before our city of culture bid. In my early days here, I often heard the phrase Leicester, city of festivals. And I'm sure you all could, but I could easily list a dozen, many of which Curve is involved with, the Mellor, Caribbean Carnival, Pride, Indian Summer, Everybody's Reading, our very own Inside Out Festival of Emerging Talent, which is on at the moment, uh, Spark, the Comedy Festival, Diwali, the International Music Festival, the Dance Festival, St George's Day, Simon Says. That's the first dozen I thought of. But just today, by a lady on my table, I've been told about Art Beat, the Clarendon Park Community Arts Festival, which also sounds fantastic. Now, we're certainly a city that likes a festival. In fact, I've often been told, especially by the great and good of Leicester, that Leicester is known throughout the UK for its festivals. Well, I think that's a lovely thought, but it simply isn't true. We are not. We're a city with an enviable volume of festivals and celebrations which have varying purposes, scales and ambition, which is only right. But we do not have a national reputation as a city of festivals. But sometimes I think it is convenient to confuse volume with impact inclusivity with creative and cultural excellence, and excellence with elitism. Take, and this is just an example, Leicester's Diwali celebrations. The Labour Manifesto describes them as being world famous. Really? We know, as a fact, it's one of the biggest Diwali festivals outside India, with 35,000 people attending the switch on. And without question, the lights and atmosphere on the Golden Mile are incredible. There's no place I'd rather be. But with every respect, is it world famous? And, and this is really my point, by claiming that it is, are we already curtailing any ambition to make it better? In other words, does our frequent hyperbole about Leicester's cultural assets actually work against an honest assessment of what we have and what needs to happen to achieve real greatness? I somehow doubt that Leicester's Diwali celebrations are actually famous across the world, any more than Leicester is known, known nationally as a festival city. But there is no doubt in my mind that with ambition for greatness and further investment in cultural program capacity and infrastructure, it could one day be exactly that. Diwali could be Leicester's cultural calling card. It could attract visitors from all backgrounds into Leicester to see for themselves what makes this city so special, to feel a part of the city's vibrancy and energy, and to then leave having had an experience like, no one else, like nowhere else in the UK. But in order to go from speaking in hyperbole to achieving actual greatness, to realising Leicester as a fully-fledged city of culture, we need to make some bold step changes. Firstly, we need to be more honest. We need to be critical friends to each other and to be prepared to take criticism ourselves. We cannot continue to accept mediocrity as being good enough for Leicester. We must understand the difference between inclusivity and excellence. Sometimes these can coincide, but more often than not, we seem to confuse one with the other. Or big enough, does, big does not necessarily equate to good. We need to be truly ambitious. I didn't move here with an ambition to help make um, Curve the best theatre in Leicester's cultural court or in the Midlands. I mo moved here to help make Curve one of the best theatres in the country, and nothing less will ever be good enough for the people who work here. We need to be really brave, much, much braver than we are, to be ambitious, to strive for excellence, to take risks, to not accept mediocrity. This requires courage. We need to be fearless, 
Sometimes it seems to me we're paralysed by our own fear of failure, so much so that we don't take the risk. Now, failure is just part of any journey towards excellence. We need to be honest and admit when something hasn't gone so well so we can learn from it, and to support each other in failure in order to pursue the exceptional. Great art and culture doesn't happen every time. So what I'd like to do, let's embark together on a journey from hyperbole to excellence. Let's acknowledge that we're an emergent city with exciting opportunity ahead of us, but we're not world famous yet. We need to get much better at shouting about what we are good at and be realistic about what needs to improve. And to get there, we need to be honest, be brave, be ambitious, and above all, be fearless. And together, I believe we can make Leicester a true city of culture. Thank you very much.